Hi there and thank you for clicking on this video. Uh, you are going to watch uh, uh, a little bit about Chapter 8, Management Leadership. Specifically, we're going to talk about styles of leadership. So if you recall in the last uh, presentation, we spoke about managers and leaders right and how leaders are different from managers in the way of the skill that they carry out to encourage or to motivate or to inspire people to get things done right so today we are going to learn about different leadership styles as well and you'll be wondering why do we need different leadership styles basically each leader would have a different way of reaching out to their employees all right uh, whether it is an autocratic leadership style democratic leadership style as well as lasers fair leadership styles right maybe any one of these leadership styles can be used by a manager to carry out uh, the way they engage with their employees right in order for them to get things done but besides leadership styles it's also important for a manager to understand their employees right on whether they are a theory x worker or a theory y worker all right because this will influence the way they decide on what leadership style would be most suitable so in summary in today's class what you will learn is the different leadership styles which is autocratic democratic or lasers fair as well as the way managers perceive their employees in order to help them decide what would be the best leadership style for them to carry out all right and of course you also cover a part on you know how leadership styles will be influenced by various factors okay before they decide what would be best okay so let's move on okay now let's list out what we have mentioned just now autocratic democratic laser sphere and theory x and theory y okay we'll start off with the leadership styles first um, let me just briefly explain to you what these styles mean for an autocratic leadership style it focuses on one-way communication it is based on close supervision and it is basically based on limited freedom and trust what this basically means is an autocratic leader would normally be the one instructing or giving direction to his people it is more of a one-way communication rather than having feedback from their employees right and an autocratic leader would normally besides giving a one-way direction or instruction would want to have very close supervision on their team of workers so you would have a leader like this breathing down your neck to see whether work is being done uh, you know messaging you all the time to ensure that things are, are very much um, aligned because there is limited trust given to you right as an employee and definitely limited freedom given to you to carry out the way to carry out a particular task the way you would like it to now before you decide oh that this is a very bad leadership style it may not necessarily be so because it depends on various factors one of it would also look at whether the employee is very new at the job all right or uh, someone who has no experience at all all right or depending on the type of or nature of the job carried out for example if it was a military uh, you know military defense uh, organization for its for that matter then the leader would definitely need to be an autocratic one right okay now let's move on to democratic leadership style okay a democratic leadership style is where a leader uses two-way communication has employee participation in the work that this carries out and trust is given so democratic means there is um, collaboration or there is a uh, two-way communication the leader would provide direction or instruction and would also expect feedback from employees all right would like to know what you have to say in how the work could be carried out that's where the word employee participation comes in all right and a democratic leader normally gives trust to the employees to carry out tasks uh, without having to closely monitor your work because they believe that you are capable and able to do the work all right because the trust is there Okay, so in this kind of situations, the type of leaders who use this method would normally use this on workers who are uh, have more experience 
capable have proven themselves that they are able to deliver right and uh, therefore the trust is given based on these factors right and at the same time a democratic leader also comes in to make sure that it is not um, you know uh, completely at the employees portion to do everything they come in to ensure that they are always with the employees getting work done so that's why we call it more of a democratic leadership style a two-way participation a collaboration effort okay now in terms of leaders who uses laser sphere as a style leadership style we have two-way communication employer given full control over work and complete freedom and trust is given now in terms of a laser sphere leadership style there is still a two-way communication between the manager and the employee at the same time the laser sphere leader would normally give complete control of the work to the employee to carry out with almost no supervision at all right and this is because there is complete and utter trust and freedom given to the worker to carry out because the employee perhaps is very very much capable in getting things done without having the laser sphere leader to put his hands or her hands into their jobs right so that is why you may have read in your books where a laser sphere style is also termed as hands-off leadership style hands-off meaning the leader puts do not put their hands into the work of their workers do not interfere in how the work is carried out because of how the employee is able to do the work without having a leader to supervise them very closely okay now then also you may be wondering what kind of leadership style is this where the manager does not have any control and giving employee the full control of the work well it depends as well in various factors it could be an employee who is very well versed in the things that he or she do or it depends on the nature of the job that the business is all about all right if it was a lab research uh, you know uh, and uh, this person is a research uh, a person right who needs to work in the lab the whole day and has complete control on whatever she or he is doing then yes there's a laser's fair leadership style would be more appropriate as opposed to having autocratic or democratic leadership style so i want you to see that it's not necessarily good it's not necessarily bad it would depend on various situations is this is how exactly your exam questions will be asked for you to ensure that you have a balanced answer depending on situations and also what we're going to look at next which is type of people that managers perceive them to be okay so the next part is how managers view employees this also influences the type of leadership style that will be carried out by the manager depending on how they view employees right now bear in mind this not necessarily mean that the employees are bad all right or very extremely good is how managers view them all right so there are two categories that mcgregor mcgregor has defined theory x worker and theory y worker so managers may view some of the employees as a theory x worker and what is a theory x worker all right lazy avoid work and responsibility right clear instructions and force is needed now if managers view their workers as lazy all right ex workers are basically people who are who they see who they view as lazy who try to avoid work whenever work is given and responsibility is given and because of this then a leadership style that will need to be put on is something of a very strong clear instruction given and then a manager would have to force all right these employees right and so an appropriate leadership leadership style normally that can be used by managers for theory x workers would be the autocratic leadership style as you can see so workers who are lazy who try to avoid work whenever you give them and you're trying to if you have gone through all the other approaches and it doesn't work because they are completely um, they're still persistently lazy and try to avoid work or responsibilities therefore you need to put force to get things done and sometimes that would encourage them or perhaps sometimes put that fear in them to ensure that work is carried out and so you can use the style of autocratic leadership style now on a theory why worker 
Managers view why workers as creative, responsible, and joyous work. So as you can see, when your workers are creative, responsible, and joyous work, they willingly want to do things. You may not need to instruct them too much or force them too much. Then using autocratic leadership style may not be the most appropriate one. All right. What you can use perhaps is a democratic leadership style or a laser fair leadership style because they are capable and they are enjoying work and they willingly want to do things, right? So therefore, you may want to encourage your managers to use a more of a collaboration effort or a hands-off approach so that they have the freedom and the trust shown to them and they want to do more because you trust them, right? So these are the leadership styles and how managers view employees, which will affect leadership styles that they will use upon them. So I hope it's not too confusing for you before. Um, yeah, let's move on so that you have a practice of some questions before we uh, end the class for today. Okay, now let's look at choice of leadership style. When do we use autocratic, democratic and laser fair leadership styles, right? So it depends on a few areas. The attitude of the managers, attitude of the workforce, the amount of time you have, all right, the importance of the situation, the risks involved, and the training and experience of the workforce. These are the five factors that will affect the way you decide what leadership style would be best, right? And um, on my left hand side, I have jumbled up the description for each five. Uh, each of the five uh, types of factors that will affect leadership style. It's all jumbled up. It's not in the correct order. So therefore, as usual, I'll leave you some time to actually match the correct description to the correct factor or the correct criteria in selecting a leadership style. Um, we'll have about a minute or so before we move on to the next slide. Okay, so let's check your answers. Choice of leadership styles, whether it's autocratic, democratic or laissez-faire, depends on a few factors. Let's look at the first factor, the attitude of managers, right? So based on managers' nature of attitude, the way they are, so it depends on the person, the manager, how he or she is. If his nature is more of a strict nature, more of a, you know, I don't talk much, I want to get things done, right? That would affect the leadership style that he or she chooses. It could be more of an autocratic rather than more democratic. So it, this is what it means when you are choosing a leadership style. Managers may choose the leadership style based on how they are and this will affect the type of style that they choose. Besides that, the attitude of the workforce is also very important, right? Based on whether employees are responsible, creative, right, with good attitude or otherwise, right? So a workforce who is basically a cherry why a set of workers who is good, responsible, willing to work, then you would Leaders may use democratic or leaders' fair leadership style as opposed to autocratic, right? The amount of time available for a job to be done, right? Based on whether there is enough time to execute delivery, the more time a task is, uh, uh, you know, there's more, the more time that is available for a certain task to be carried out, then there would be more of a hands-off or perhaps a democratic leadership style being used as opposed to autocratic. With limited time, there could be more... Uh, more of a tense situation where some direction or quick guidance is needed where autocratic style may be used instead, right? Now, 
looking at the importance of the situation and the risk involved. So the, besides time, you also look at the situation, what needs to be carried out and whether it's a high risk or low risk task. Right. So if it's a high risk task and the importance and the fast decision is required, an important business decision and autocratic may be used instead of democratic or latest fair. OK. And vice versa. And also looking at the training and experience of the workforce. If you have workers who are really capable, experienced, trained, independent, who knows what they are doing, there is no need to be all autocratic over them because that may show them that you are uh, that you do not trust them and you do not think that they are capable and they may tend to slag off instead of performing. All right. So depending on whether your workers are trained and capable and if they are perhaps democratic or lasers fair may be used but if they are not where they have no experience in training no experience on the work to be done they're not independent yet because they're new at the job then a leader may use an autocratic leadership style So this is a slide where we summarize what we've covered today. You have identified the different leadership styles and how managers view their employees, the X and Y workers, able to explain the different characteristics of each leadership style so you know what, how to define democratic, autocratic and so forth. And you understand that there is no one style of leadership and the choice of leadership is based on different situations, different types of people, training experience, amount of time available and so forth. There's just so many reasons why different leadership styles are used and you understand that a manager may decide to use different styles based on different times. We've come to the end of today's class. If um, you have questions, the email address is on the slide for you to have drop me an email. Um, I hope you're able to follow today's class. Until I see you till the for the next class, have a great, great day.